Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about some specific features of enzymes. So, this is a pretty clear diagram. I think it illustrates most of the points. What we have going on here is a chemical reaction where we're turning this orange molecule, whatever it might be, we're breaking it apart into these two uh, products. Okay, so our reaction is really this turning into that. All right, this could be like A turning into B plus C. And if this was a regular chemical reaction, which I guess it is in a way, we would call this the reactant. A would be the reactant and B and C would be the products. All right. Okay, so we learned in the previous videos that for any chemical reaction like this, there's often an activation energy that needs to be supplied to the reaction to get it to go ahead. And so this reaction of turning A into B and C obviously has a certain amount of activation energy to get it to go. And if this reaction is happening in a living cell, the chances are it's going to be helped. The reaction is going to be assisted by an enzyme and that enzyme is going to make the reaction go more easily by lowering the activation energy. So let's talk about how the enzyme actually does that and what it looks like. So the enzyme on this slide is this blue shape down here. Okay. And we said before the enzymes are made of protein molecules generally. So we know protein molecules have a three-dimensional shape. They're a long protein ch uh, chain of amino acids that is then folded up to make a kind of 3D shape, like a little tool or a little um, motor or whatever it is. It's a, so here the enzyme is, the protein is folded up to create this kind of shape that looks like this. And every enzyme molecule has a special zone on its surface called the active site and this is the most important part of the enzyme this thing here all right the active site and you can see on this diagram that the active site is um, this little kind of notch or nook or little crevice on the surface of the enzyme it's like a three-dimensional little kind of um, indentation here and it is where this Sub this reactant, this substrate molecule, can sit down in this active site. It fits in perfectly. It's like they, they, have the, they have matching shapes. So just then I used the word substrate, which you see up here. Now, we've also used the word reactant. So if we were just looking at this like a chemical reaction, turning orange into the red and yellow blocks, we could call this the reactant. And it is always a reactant. We're not getting rid of that word. But because this reactant can fit into the active site of this enzyme, we can call it the substrate for this enzyme. So the thing that fits in the active site of an enzyme is called the substrate for that enzyme. And the only thing that can fit in this active site is this molecule that has the right shape to sit down in these little grooves right here. All right, so we can say that this enzyme, let's call this enzyme number one. Enzyme number one substrate is this orange molecule. All right, and the substrate molecule fits perfectly into the active site of the enzyme it's supposed to fit into. All right, so once the substrate has slotted itself into the active site, then you have this, this, um, structure here, the enzyme substrate complex, and this is where the enzyme kind of grabs hold of the substrate molecule and kind of twists and tweaks and stretches and bends it to try and weaken those bonds to make it so their bonds will fall apart or separate uh, at the lower uh, activation energy. And once the bonds have been separated, then these are going to fall out and the products are released. And here's the enzyme again back to how it started. All right, so we can see here that the enzyme itself, here it is, here it is, here it is. The enzyme hasn't changed. It hasn't been used up. 
it hasn't gone away. Uh, it hasn't even been like modified in, in any way. And it didn't, it's not part of the reaction, right? It's, people get very confused when they say the enzyme reacts with the substrate. The enzyme does not react with the substrate. The enzyme is just helping the substrate turn into the product. And the enzymes looks like this at the beginning and it looks like this at the end. It's unchanged, right? It can, and it can be used over. So if another orange substrate molecule happened to wander by, it could sit down in this enzyme's active site and the enzyme could do the job all over again. So the enzyme can be used multiple times to work on this, um, this, this kind of substrate. Now, if a different molecule came along that was shaped like this, this molecule wouldn't be able to fit in this active site. It's the wrong shape. So nothing would happen. It would just maybe bounce in the active site, bounce back out again, and nothing would get changed. The only thing that this enzyme can do is take hold of this orange substrate and turn it into these products. So uh, we say um, that enzymes are specific, and that means that they only attach to a specific substrate. They only help one kind of reaction to happen. Not any old thing could go sit down in that active site. It has to be the right shaped substrate. Um, we also say that enzymes are, are not modified, altered, used up when they help a reaction. They just help the reaction happen and then they're at the end and they could be reused for, for the next reaction. Um, the other thing to be aware of is, uh, and this is kind of interesting, is how does the substrate find its way into the active site for the enzyme? Um, the enzyme can't shout, hey, substrate, come over here. They don't have eyes. They can't see each other. There's no tractor beam like pulling the substrate into the active site. The only way the substrate ends up in the active site is by random molecular collisions. So you've got to imagine in a cell, a 37 degree Celsius in your body, all these molecules are moving around randomly and they're colliding randomly. And so here's my enzyme with its active site. Here's my substrate. They might collide like this. They might collide like that. They might, but they have to collide perfectly so they can slot together. And then the reaction can happen. The substrate can be worked on and then it can come out as the products. The enzyme is unchanged. All right, so it's just a, a, by virtue of random collisions that these two um, molecules stick together and then come back apart again. All right, so that's a, a basic overview, a very simple diagram of, of um, enzymatic functions. Um, I'm going to show you another diagram, very, very similar, so you can get used to seeing um, different ways that this is depicted. So once again, here's our enzyme, this big purple blob. We're going to call this enzyme 2 because it's a different diagram. Uh, it's a protein. Once again, enzymes are proteins. You can see the active site right here. Looks like a pair of sunglasses here but anyway it's a little crevice on the surface where the proteins folded to give a little nook and here is the substrate for this one oops substrate let me write that properly <laughs> substrate okay so this green molecule is the substrate for this enzyme so you'd say the green molecule is the substrate for enzyme number two. And you can see this substrate comes along here, collides with the enzyme and sits down into the active site. They fit perfectly together. The enzyme does its thing, helps the reaction to happen, separates. This is another enzyme that's breaking apart the substrate. And then the two products, these would be the products, are released. Off they go to wherever they need to go in the cell. And the enzyme, here it is, unchanged, can do the job all over again. So it hasn't been used up, hasn't been modified, hasn't been altered. It's uh, hanging out in the cell, ready to do the job for a second time, should another substrate molecule um, end up in the active site. So you can see how we use diagrams to show these reactions. Um, I want to show you one more diagram here. Uh, so once again, we have a enzyme here, which, and here you can see how the proteins kind of folded up. You can see some of the folding, right? It's complicated. Um, and you can see the active site. It's like this little nook right here. 
And here is the substrate shown here as a uh, yellow um, molecule sitting in the active site. Now, the, this slide is talking about two ways that enzymes and substrates interact. So, you know, 20 years ago, we used to think that um, enzymes and substrates, we used to use this idea of a lock and key. So the enzyme is the lock, the substrate is the key, and only one key can fit in that lock. So different enzymes have different shaped locks so that different substrates can fit into them. Um, that's a good model. It still works. It's a good mental picture to have. An enzyme is a blobby shape with a special shape in, on the top, which only one thing can slot into. It's fine. It's not wrong. Um, but this lock and key model is a little old now. And now we know that when the substrate fits into the enzyme's active site, the enzyme does actually kind of wiggle and change and kind of grab on to the substrate a little bit tighter. And you can see here on this top diagram how when the substrate sits into the active site, the sides, this kind of area and this area of the protein kind of change their folding a little bit and kind of encase the substrate to make it a really tight fit. The best analogy I can give you of that is we used to think of this as a lock and key where the key just slides in and pulls out and there's not really a lot of change going on. Now I think a better idea or a more up-to-date idea of how this happens is the idea of a glove and a hand. So if I was to hold up a glove here, a glove looks roughly like a hand, right? It has a thumb and it has four fingers and it's shaped kind of like a hand. But it's not until I put my hand into the glove that the glove actually molds itself more perfectly around my fingers. And that's kind of the idea of an induced fit. When the substrate goes into the active site, the enzyme kind of shapes itself around it even better. So the old way of thinking about this is this lock and key. It's not wrong. It's just does, it misses some of the subtleties. The new way of thinking of this is, a, is an induced fit, like a hand going into a glove and modifying the glove a little bit. So this is all a bunch of description of how enzymes function and some of the key factors of them being not modified, not used up, being very specific to substrates, etc. In the next video, we'll talk more about things that influence enzyme function.